All right. Well, Brian, this is kind of a homecoming for you in a way, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. Very much so. I've always you know, thought of Dallas as my home. I'm, as a matter of fact, I grew up watching you on TV, so. <laughs> Great. Wonderful. Uh, you, you were not born here, though. I was born in Oklahoma City, yes. Yeah, and you lived here from when to when? Uh, uh, see, I guess when I was from when I was four until I was until I was about eighteen, then I left. And a lot of time in Oklahoma. And you played football around here. I played football in Irving. At MacArthur at High. MacArthur High. Yes. yes. Did that have anything to do with your being recruited by Oklahoma? Uh, yeah, you know how the Oklahoma and Texas rivalry is and. Oklahoma always likes to steal the players from Texas, so to speak. And uh, you know, my roots being from Oklahoma and my my blood running as red as the rednecks up there, so I felt allegiance to go to Oklahoma. But you know, it's it was always a dream of mine to be a, an Oklahoma Sooner. And you were. I was an Oklahoma Sooner. I was a, a very happy Sooner and had a, a wonderful time up there. You uh, did you do any acting while you were in college? Uh, well. Except for the acting on the field, so to speak. No, I didn't do any any uh, drama or anything like that. No plays, no Ju Romeo and Juliet or anything like that. What do you mean, acting on the field? Uh, well, by that I mean I was an entertainer. You know, I've always viewed myself as an entertainer. Uh, I entertained in high school. You know, my form was the football field, um, as well as sometimes in the classroom. Uh, I also did uh, that. Tra I transcended that over to the world of of college football and I saw how that could could really be uh, established in a, in a larger setting because of the, you know, the crowd reactions and the number of stadiums you go to, the number of states that you visit. So um, that character of the Boz was was uh, was kind of like a character within myself and uh, I always had fun playing that on the football field. So you're not that character anymore? Not anymore. I mean I don't, I don't rant and rave. I'm not the uh, Oh, the arrogant, cocky, um, brash individual that uh, was on that football field that made those statements in the paper to you know, uh, get a response from people and, and uh, excite the, the fans and get the hype. And, uh, I'm always, I've always been the quiet, quiet individual. So now you're making your movie debut. And uh, I, I guess, really, I'm wondering why this particular character, when I'm sure you had other options. Well, I, uh, I viewed my options, like you said, uh, uh, very carefully, and I wanted to be seen on the screen for the first time as, you know, as a good guy in the, uh, in the role as a football player. In my mind, I was playing the bad guy, and for that, you know, I played it well. A linebacker always plays a bad guy. And um, I wanted to be viewed as, you know, a nice guy. At the same time, showing a side of myself that, that, uh, although many times I tried to profess this is the way I actually am, nobody would ever believe me. But until you actually give them that and show them that, then uh, they they won't believe it. And that's why this character, John Stone, plays the way he does, and he has the the intelligence and the integrity that he does on the screen. A lot of bike riding in this movie. A lot of back riding, yeah. Did you do a lot of your own stunts? Did uh, the majority of all my stunts, except for the ones that the director would sneak in while I wasn't on set. Uh, I've been riding bikes since I was a, uh, you know, a kid, and uh, you know, rode them through high school and stopped when I started playing serious, you know, football up at the college level, and then I picked it back up when I was uh, at the NFL level when I started to retire. In the film, while while making the film. Did you have any spills or injuries? Uh, I did have one uh, one fall. Uh, it was during a stunt, but it didn't. Uh, it wasn't a major fall. It was just a you know a quick uh, faux pas, so to speak. And uh, uh, you know we didn't have any any lost time in production. And uh, uh, the the bike riding in the film is you know very hairy. We had some accidents, some injuries, a couple of broken legs, and uh, uh, you know there was some some scary moments. But uh, those are the situations when you're shooting. A, a movie with motorcycles, you're going to have situations where, you know, the the bikes aren't necessarily your friends, but uh, sometimes they're your enemies. Do you think there'll be any repercussions from uh, bikers because uh, uh, you show, or the film shows, uh, you kind of the nasty side of, of bikers? 
Well, what we did is we took uh, the one percent, uh, and that's what this group is. It's the one percenters, uh, and we portrayed uh, how they would actually be in, in a given situation if there was an infiltrator in their in their compound. You know, there's uh, thousands of biking clubs in the United States, and they all seem to get a bad rap. But there's only the one percent club that gives those thousands of biking clubs that that bad rap. So, if anything, we've we've educated people on the effects of the one percenters, uh, and uh, we've we've heightened the level of in, uh, of intelligence for for bikers all in general. But we're going to give uh, you know the the other bikers, so to speak, a better name. The one percent are the Hell's Angels. Well, I'm not going to name any names. <laughs> you did that, so. <laughs> I guess my, my follow-up question to that, Brian, was going to be, you know, when you meet some Hell's Angels head-on, you, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you're going to, um, I do know a few of the one percent clubs in, you know, in the United States, and there's probably only three to four clubs that, that are actually one percent clubs. And out of those clubs, there's just a few members inside the club that, that do the, the things that cause them you know, to be wanted by the FBI and the police forces. But, uh, uh, you know, I very rarely ever go touring in areas where it could be uh, dangerous to my health, so to speak. It appears to me, having seen the film, that this is a character that's just, you know, set up for sequel after sequel. Should that happen? Would you be happy doing that character again and again? Um, well, I don't think that uh, we designed it such as such. You know, the character in John Stone was based on a true character that happened uh, about 12 years ago. And it's the same. The story remains the same, although we changed a few things. Um, you know, as long as we can maintain that there is an interest level in the character, and each movie we do with the character would, uh, you know, be a new adventure for him. Uh, the audience can grow with him as a character grows, then, you know, there's always that possibility. And you wouldn't mind being as Sylvester Stallone was Rambo time and again? Uh, well, I wouldn't do it over and over and over again. No, I'm not going to, I'm not going to beat the same bush until it uh, comes up to be a stem. I'm going to just continue to grow as an actor and uh, challenge myself each time I have a new script and I'll, I'll work on that. And, uh, you know, if the time comes to make another sequel to Stone Cold, uh, then, you know, I, I'll weigh the options against what's out there and, uh, you know, make a decision there. Do you have another film in the works now? We do have a couple of projects in development right now, so it's... I do have the choices and, uh, you know, fortunately enough for me, I have people behind me doing the, the development work and it, it allows me those choices to make when it, when it comes down to making the decisions of, of which is the best film at the time. You actually did study acting. It wasn't just something you decided, oh, well, I'll... I'm just going to wake up and act. <laughs> um, yes, I, I work with an acting, I like to call him a professor, and a lot of times he's my psychologist, too, uh, in terms of how to uh, approach the, the world of acting. You know, he, um, you know, he's always kidding around on the set about, uh, well, they were acting, you know. Uh, he's, he's very in tuned in not how to act, but how to be yourself, be comfortable with, with yourself and portray your inner feelings. And uh, Harold did an, a magnificent job in, in allowing me to become comfortable with myself, at the same time um, show a side of myself that maybe I may be uncomfortable with or, or how I feel may be silly in some situations, but to get the, the scene across and be dramatic, you, you, know, you need to be comfortable with those situations. Brian, do you have any regrets at all about writing the book? About the book? The Boz. Uh, no, I, I wrote the book as, um, as a lot of fun. You know, I also wrote it to, uh, to explain myself in a lot of different ways about where I came from, the world in which I, uh, I lived in for the four years at Oklahoma without taking any shots, um, you know, unnecessary shots at people. Uh, you know, we, uh, we did most of the book in tongue-in-cheek type uh, Type things, and, and we laughed through the book a lot of times. But uh, um, you know, I've always, you know, when the book came out, and I, I did the press conference on the book, I told everybody, look, the book is the book, and you should take the book exactly for what it's worth. Don't take it too seriously in some spots. At the same time, read uh, the book for the uh, the expositional uh, reasons that uh, the book is for. Uh, the book is for entertainment, and that was for what it was, and we entertained people with it. So we're not to believe everything that's in it. 
Uh, I wouldn't believe everything that's in it in terms of, uh, you know, the, the, the slapstick type things in there, although all the things in there are true and factual. Uh, there's, um, uh, the book is a very accurate portrayal of my life in the last four years during the, during the course of my tenure at college, you know, and I just wanted to bring to light some of the situations that I did go through and, and the, uh, the things that I was confronted with. And you were in college, you played college ball from when to when? Uh, I played at Oklahoma from, uh, from 83 into 87. And then you signed with Seattle? In the year of 87, yes. But you never played with him, did, or did uh, you? I did play for Seattle um, for approximately about three years, uh, but uh, really should have only played for about a year, a year and a half. And uh, then, it was what was it, an $11 million mm -hmm. contract? I did have, uh, it was a sizable contract, yes it was. Is 11 accurate? 11 is pretty accurate, yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Appreciate the numbers. <laughs> and, and so what happened with that then? You, you didn't get the whole 11 or you did? Well, uh, I was, um, we made sure that uh, I was protected injury-wise. You know, since football is such a violent game, um, there's a lot of situations where if you're not protected on the back end of a contract, then the years that you play um, sometimes uh, will make you uh, quit the game before you're ready to quit the game. And that was, uh, in my situation, that was the case. And uh, uh, we protected ourselves on the back end, and, and my contract was guaranteed from a physical standpoint. So you got the 11 million? I got the uh, contract. <laughs> All right. <now>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Brian, I've enjoyed talking with you, and good luck to you with your acting career and uh, with Stone Cold. I hope it does well for you. Thank you, Bobby.